This is my full custom Pro Touring chassis for my 86 square body that I have designed from the ground up. In today's video, we're gonna finish the upper control arm mounts for the C5 front stub and install a one of a kind three link setup. The frame is basically done. So the last major systems we have are front suspension and rear suspension. And then it will be a complete chassis. The C5 upper control arms are really easy to mount. There's just this bushing with two bolts. So all we really need to mount the upper control arms is a plate with some holes in it. Setting the mounting locations for these bushings was a little bit tricky. The outer shell of the control arm sticks out further than the mating surface of the bushing. That is why these plates have these holes in them. These pieces are spacers, so the arms are mounted at the correct width. I have the driver's side clamped up with the spacers welded on, and I kind of left them as this shape so they would kind of look cool, and they're completely covered by the control arms, and you're only going to see it from like down below. At least it'll look cool while changing the tire, I guess. All right, let's get these welded up. So that's the gist of what's going on with the upper control arm mounts. Now we do the same thing on the other side. And there it is. The upper control arm mounts for both sides are done. Now we're gonna move to the back of the chassis and finally give this beautiful quick performance nine inch housing some love. Quick shout out to quick performance. Anything nine inch you need, custom or bolt in, they've got you covered. So back here, I'm doing a triangulated three link setup. A triangulated three link is like a combination of a regular three link and a triangulated four link. The lower links are the same as you'd see in a traditional four link, but the upper link is a little bit more complex. So these are the pieces for the upper link. We just need to notch them. Bang. Some of you know that I am also a machinist, so I machined my own rod end inserts. And that's mainly because I'm running a beefier tube than most people run in their four link setups because of the triangulated three link. Well, hello to you too, Wisconsin. It's a new morning in the garage and Wisconsin has blessed us with like a foot of snow in the past two days and the snow blower broke. I'm gonna work on the truck. The other night, Andy and I whipped up the three link bars at his shop. A huge shout out to Sorg Welding again. Andy's an awesome guy. So both the lower links and the upper link are done. So how this triangulated three link is gonna work. On the bottom, you have your traditional four link bar. In a triangulated four link, you have these bars coming in on opposing angles. Now with a triangulated three link, we take these upper bars and we make them into one bar. So this upper link bar has three points of contact, two on the frame and one on the top of the pumpkin. These himes may look a little small, but these are the standard himes that you'd run with a one and a quarter or a one and a half inch diameter four link bar. This one, however, is way oversized on purpose. Heim joints and bolts in general are very strong in axial loading. But when you apply a bending moment, which is a force at the end of the bolt and then the root is trying to bend, that's not very good. I did run a force calculation with one of these Heim joints in that location. And under a static load, it would have been okay. But under an impulsive load, which is what you're gonna see when you're shifting the weight from side to side, going through a slalom or something like that, it's it probably wasn't gonna be okay. So I did upsize this guy, and it's about six to eight times stronger than one of these standard U-joints for a four link. The upper link boxes are done and sitting in place. I'm gonna get the lower link boxes put together, and pretty soon we're gonna be able to articulate the rear suspension. Those are cooling. We're gonna set our lower bar lengths to what they should be according to the model, which is 30 and a half inches. The lower link bars are set up just like a traditional four link bar. 
You have a right-handed thread on one side and a left-handed thread on the other. That allows you to spin the center tube and it will lengthen or shorten the link so you can get your adjustments just right. I have the first link put together here with the lower link bar bucket and the tabs that mount on the rear end. So I'm putting this thing in, the front surface of these tabs has to be vertical, the bar is gonna be level, and then this just butts up into the frame. tacked up hub mounts are off so it's totally being supported by the three link quick look at the rear mounting tabs these are quarter inch steel they're currently just tacked onto the rear end and on the top these are also quarter inch steel and I've made a bunch of these wing pieces that are gonna go on something like that to help support these upper tabs the upper and lower forward mounting buckets are made from 3 16 steel. They were a tab and groove design. So they slotted together and they welded up real nice. So when it comes to adjustments on this three link, the upper link is mainly for side to side adjustment and the bottom two links will control your pinion angle and keeping the axle parallel. The pivot lengths of the upper link and the lower link are the same and they are mounted parallel. So that means while the rear end goes through its travel, the pinion angle should stay the same. So now with this fully mounted, I can show you the main disadvantage with a three link setup like this. So we're coming into a hard right corner and the truck starts to lean. You can see the axle will give it a pretty aggressive twist here. It pivots on the heim joint on top of the pumpkin. So this is a pretty gross example to let you see how it's pivoting across that top link there. Under normal conditions, it should only pivot maybe that much. Having a high roll center like that is not the most desirable, but it's not the hugest deal in the rear suspension. In the front suspension, the roll center is a lot more critical. It's also a lot more difficult to find. So I missed a couple pieces when talking about the front roll center here, so ignore everything I say here because it is very wrong. In the next video, we're doing more suspension stuff, so I'll go over it in depth there correctly. It's motions, it's going to move all over the place. But at static ride height, you can get a decent idea of what it's going to look like. So looking down at my upper control arm, it may look like it is angled upward, but we're looking at the pivot point of the ball joint compared to the pivot point of the mounting bushings. So we're actually looking at this point up here to there, and that is just a little bit down. So if we kind of eyeball that out, that puts the roll center like somewhere around the middle mass of the motor. And that's with the C5 front suspension set up pretty close to stock. The roll center's looking good. We can also check out our change in camber while we move the front suspension through travel. We're starting at basically 90 degrees, seeing no change. Oh, this thing's, oh, it's on hold. All right, let's try this again. Two degrees. It's two degrees negative, right? Yes, that's good. All right, so we're seeing about two degrees of negative camber, and that's the wheel pitching in toward the top as the suspension goes up. It would be nice to get a little more out of it because the more body roll you have, the more camber you need to keep the tire flat on the ground. So we might be able to get more out of that with the suspension adjustments later. I'm very happy with how the front suspension and the rear suspension have turned out so far. 
I just can't wait to see some wheels on this thing. I actually have the old wheels and tires from the truck right here. I think we're gonna pop those on quick. So these are 18s by eight with a 245 on them. The truck currently has 18 by 10s or 275s. And I'm probably gonna be running more like a 295 or a 3, 305, maybe a 315 this year. But I did design this chassis to be able to handle a 345. That requires a whole new set of wheels. Now that's pretty sweet. So that is only the one side and that's about where it should be. And there is tons of room in there for activities. Oh, that also means we can see how well we clear while turning. Oh, wow. That's pretty aggressive. And it's hitting the lower control arm before it's hitting anything else. How about back this way? Yeah, same, it's hitting the lower control arm first. So the other tire is a little bit bigger and then something like that. Sweet. Part of me still thinks I'm crazy trying to get this thing done by April because there's only 12 and a half weeks till the Pro Touring Truck Shootout. But I'm still confident it'll happen. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, hit that like and subscribe. We'll catch y'all in the next one.